Abe hello and a very warm welcome to Leaders of Tomorrow season 8 with me Sonali Krishna as always today as well we're continuing to focus on the covid-19 impact and today of course we're looking at the startup ecosystem and the kind of pressures this ecosystem is going to face I'm joined by a mega VC panel today Sanjay Nath managing director Bloom Ventures TCM Sundaram founder and managing director of Chirate Ventures and Anand Lunia founding partner of India Cushion thank you so much gentlemen for joining me right here on Leaders of Tomorrow Let me take it to Sanjay first in terms of the overall scenario right now that the startups are faced with. Uh, the recent NASCOM report that has that's been published uh, doesn't sound very optimistic at all in terms of how uh, the startup ecosystem is really going to face uh, the crisis at hand. So, give me your headline views on on the immediate impact that startups will face have already started facing in the last couple of months and going forward. First of all, I'll say that this is a global phenomenon, right? This global pandemic. This is not unique to India, and neither to startups at all, as we all know. Secondly, it's taking much longer to recover. So the most important is actually to control your costs, right? And to control your costs, uh, reduce every potential and lengthen the runway because cost is the only variable that you can control, right? It's important for startups to take a step back and think about, you know, what the post-COVID world is going to be like. We hear what like the new normal. uh there are lots of hidden opportunities you get edtech for example in education and you get telemedicine in the area of healthcare also content and streaming anand according to the ernst and young report private equity and venture capital investments may drop as much as 60% in india due to covid-19 in 2020 alone would you be in agreement with that report and the kind of projections that have been made and if that is the case then what happens to this ecosystem that is largely leaning towards private equity and uh, and vc money so i think uh, we have too many doomsdayers uh, around us and and practically every report uh, simply shows a declining something uh, or the other you know the reality is that uh, normal businesses every business is affected uh, in a normal business you don't have one month of revenue you make you lose your profits you make don't have two months of revenue you go into losses you don't have 3 months of revenue you go bankrupt right but uh, you know vc funded startups and and angel funded startups right are better off in in this case because these are companies who actually have cash reserves they've raised external capital unlike most small businesses who are not privileged to do uh, to get venture capital uh, to that extent the nascom report does not represent uh, vc funded startups actually it represents uh, small businesses who are not vc funded they clarified that We see for it start up actually actually are going to come out stronger after this, right? Uh, in general, if you see around you yourself, right, where are you buying from? You are buying from uh, an e-commerce player. You're buying from a startup. You know, those are the only ones who are operating right now. Uh, that's the nature of the virus. Uh, your online companies, your social media companies, ed tech companies, they're all all doing very well. You know, pharma delivery companies, for example, doing extremely well. In general, directionally. Uh, this is going to tilt the scales you know change the consumer preferences in the favor of uh, startups in the favor of technology led uh, solutions for consumers and uh, of course you know uh, like everything else you know venture capital and private equity deals are done uh, not because you had a bad quarter or you might have a bad year we will definitely have a bad year uh, but because you know there is a great future right i mean uh, uh, the best private equity investments that have happened in the country today and they are private equity they they go into an unlisted company are uh, in reliance jio you add reliance jio investments to the tally and i think we'll have the most bumper year for the country this year is going to be a defining moment uh, also you know think about uh, you know people going through a 3 month diet right and and if you really do a 3 month diet where you're cutting down your cost trimming all the flab you're going to emerge fitter out of this right Okay, fair enough. Let me take it to you, TCM. He seems to have an optimistic view, an outlook of the impact of COVID nineteen. Also, taking the mega deal of Geo and Facebook will obviously tilt the scales. But are you in agreement with the optimism uh, that has been shared? I think tech startups have an advantage. This is the time they will be increasing their market share. They will get fitter. But there are certain risks that they carry, right? Because they are used to. Uh, burn and also capital uh, requirement. Those who do need capital in the intermediate time, 
may find it difficult to get capital easily mainly because i think investors also will want to wait and watch for at least 3 months on a post covid scenario as to how the startup uh, category as well as the specific startup copes up with this post covid scenario right so to that extent i think having a longer runway uh, 12 months plus is very important those who come out of this covid scenario uh, standing will be winners and success written all over them Anand, would you say then that if I had to ask you as a VC, what are the challenges you're seeing on ground with startups who are trying to pivot, who are trying to change the way they work, are actually rewriting the rules? What is the current on ground reality from your lens? Yeah, uh, just a statistic to add from my portfolio. You said the startups have only three months of money. In my portfolio, on an average, I'm talking about forty startups. uh on an average we have more than 12 months of money most most of them have 18 months of money this has happened because we cut the cost right away you know most startups actually cut the cost in last week of march itself as soon as the lockdowns happened they had plans ready before the lockdowns also but what's been painful is to let people go uh cut salaries uh in in most instances founders have taken between 50 to 100% pay cuts but the biggest worry is the the second order effects of job losses right not just startups i mean everybody fired people i mean uh, everybody's reduced salary of course definitely uh this will basically mean that not only the purchasing power of the existing consumers reduce their ability to purchase a few things complete transactions because of covid will reduce and there will be a general fear right when when you you see 10 20% of your colleagues lose their jobs you are not going to for example go and buy a house right Uh, hopefully we will see more steps in terms of uh, fiscal and monetary policies being taken by the government we haven't seen any anything on the tax cuts etc those kind of things uh, a lot more has to be done to remove the pain of the people right and uh, when i say the startup sector will do well a lot of startups have shut down right but then uh, in venture capital our focus is not to ensure that every startup stays on you know every startup has to survive it doesn't work work that way right and i think to that extent you know if the economy is affected uh, startups have to be impacted at some point right i mean uh, so probably valuations will will suffer even even a few quarters from now probably fund fund raise will be difficult few quarters from now and economy has to be brought back somehow uh, i don't know how to do it you know the job of the finance minister but uh, something really has to be done we we are worried about uh, what will happen in the next few quarters when job losses really don't come back you know uh, jobs don't come back TCM you know business continuity as we've seen not only with like startups or any businesses even established businesses even large corporations we noticed uh, that you know that was really an area which came to the fore a weak area where uh, most people did not have that contingency plan if that is the case with large corporations uh, what would you say would assess the on ground situation for startups especially in uh, you know early or mid stage both business continuity and risk management are things which were not possibly at the top most priority earlier before covid but like uh, sanjay and anand said by nature of being tech startups they were already on the cloud so they could move to work from home much faster than uh, their established players right so that that is the uh, advantage they had they moved agile in fact uh, we are part of a company where uh, 10000 people call center got moved to working from home uh, in less than one weeks time right another interesting thing that we have noticed is that most of the startups have actually very quickly pivoted uh, moving from you know uh, launching uh, new products new offerings um, new categories um that is something that again they have demonstrated agility uh, to come back to business continuity this is something that now has become right in the center i think leadership teams are focused on creating business continuity and as board members we have also encouraged them to think through that but i think initial impact has been handled very well by the startup community uh, compared to uh, you know traditional companies
taking uh, a cue from what Anand said, uh, Sanjay, this is really for you. And he talked about the fact that, uh, you know, all startups are not meant to succeed, right? And uh, only a few succeed, the ones which are fit and have a solid business model in place. That's fair. But would you not agree that given the extreme scenario we are currently faced with, a lot more startups will fail that would have not possibly failed if we didn't have COVID. And if that is the situation, if you look at the number of startups that will actually collapse because of the kind of uh, pressures we've seen thanks to the pandemic, and the suffering will be very, very real. So do you think that might discourage the startup ecosystem from taking its next leap? I think Anand and TCM also made some interesting points. You know, let's remember this is not just a startup thing, right? I mean, we are talking about, uh, you know, potentially retail giants like Macy's and the others potentially going bankrupt. You're talking about airlines going bankrupt, right? You're talking about companies, universities shutting down. So this is a global phenomenon, right? This is not just a startup thing. I think it's very important to realize this is global. Uh, the second part, uh, like Anand said, there's a lot of pain, right? Even in our, I mean, we have more than 75 startups. In many cases, those pay cuts started right from the top, right? You have to, uh, I think we were doing a session and one of our uh, founder advisors said that, you know, the CEO has got to take the bullet to uh, his or her heart, right? It only starts from the top. The pay cuts and pain only becomes real. And uh, the only way to do it is that it starts from the top. So there's undoubtedly going to be a lot of pain, even for our startups, which are, you know, let's say we're all well-known VC funds. If our startups are pain, I can imagine the earlier startups. Um, having said that, uh, you've probably heard this that, uh, uh, you know, many times, I know it's been repeated, but Uber started after the 2008 financial crisis. Uh, uh, JD.com in China was started after the SARS crisis, right? Eerily uh, similar. Uh, the fact is that if you uh, think about the power law of venture capital from one side, I'll talk about the entrepreneur side later, uh, investment is all about cycles, right? About, uh, about ups and downs, uh, you know, TCM. Of course, being the most seasoned out of all of us has probably seen the most crises, but we've also seen uh, you had uh, Y2K, then you had uh, 9-11, then you had the financial crisis. Anand and I have also been through three crises ourselves. And you've always seen opportunity and uh, death, right? I mean, that's the nature of uh, all ecosystems. Then obviously the startup is the thing. Now, the VC community has gotten together with the ACT initiative, right? As you may be aware of, especially in certain uh, in healthcare and in certain sectors, uh, you know, which are directly related to COVID, there have been grants and this funding for that. Um, uh, this is probably, it, not probably, it is a down cycle uh, to use that word. But, uh, you know, like everything, right? I mean, startups rise through the ashes, the strong will become stronger. There will be a lot of pain. So, you know, my advice to entrepreneurs who are already doing it, uh, uh, I would say, like, you know, cut costs, control what you can, which is cost, extend your runway. And uh, what is a startup? It's, a, it's basically a finite amount of time and you can run a couple of experiments. For somebody who's starting up or thinking of starting up today, just think very carefully if this is the right time, if you're in a tailwind sector, what problem are you really solving? And remember, uh, uh, the new normal will also offer new opportunities, right? Like we've been talking today, uh, enterprise behavior, everything is moved to the cloud. Uh, uh, consumers uh, are spending probably more time on online and apps, so they'll be mobile, gaming, streaming, look at Netflix taking off, which is where I think our role as risk managers and advisors also come in, like CCM was saying. I think the risk management component of VCs becoming advisors to our startups becomes even more. Uh, I would say Anand and TCM will probably agree with me. I think we've never been as involved with the startups as now. We're almost like partners. You know, offer a word of caution to the startups who are gung-ho. Just think carefully of what problem you're solving and then go. You know, don't rush into it. I think develop a business plan very carefully and, and uh, you know, go slow and, uh, you know, then go out in the market. That's very heartening to hear. And, and uh, uh, to you, Anand, uh, taking a cue from what Sanjay said, where you've almost become advisors, uh, partners and uh, so much of hand-holding. What would you say uh, has been your experience with startups who you have been much more involved with now than previously? And of course, advice to entrepreneurs who might see themselves on the brink and do not see a light at the end of the tunnel. What would be your words to them? You know, I was involved in the first dot-com crash in 1999-2000. Uh, then we had a crash in 2009-10. Uh, but particularly 2008 uh, December with the Lehman crisis. Uh, we went through a bad patch in the economy in 2013 and a little bit of venture and uh, US market uh, downturn in 2015 also. 
uh, this is the worst, right? Uh, and we've, I have never seen so many, uh, you know, uh, layoffs, so many salary cuts, and such, uh, you know, zero revenue months ever, uh, like such prolonged periods of zero revenue in many startups. Uh, it's a it's a tough task. You have to support. Every founder will ask you for money. Right. I mean, uh, you know, founders will say, can you give me a bridge because I don't want to fire anybody. Right. And I'd say, dude, I would love, love to give you a bridge if you give me a timeline. When is Corona going away? If you tell me this is only for three months, I'll give you a bridge for three months. But the problem is that we don't know how long this is going to be. Right. And slowly you have to talk to them and bring their mind around saving the company. And unfortunately, it could mean that it's not saving the people. Right. Now, uh, as a VC, normally in normal circumstances, I don't want to intrude. You know, we want to be as, there as a sounding board, not necessarily as a as a superior or as a as a reporting manager. Uh, quite the contrary. But in these times, founders are alone, right? I mean, uh, in many cases, the founders are hiring people who report directly to them, very senior CXO level people, also, right? And and they they feel very lonely. They need a sounding board. They need somebody to talk to. Sure. So sure, TCM as somebody who's seen, uh, you know, several crises and uh, somebody who's got uh, the most number of experience, if you could throw light on how we're going to see not just 2020, but let's say the next five years in terms of what we'll witness, the good, the bad, the ugly. What I believe is that I think uh, there is a medium to long term benefit for tech startups. Uh, but in between, there will be pain. Just to give you some context, only 10 to 15 percent of startups are funded either by VCs or angels. There are another 80, 85 percent which have not been funded. Those are the ones who will have very little runway and run the risk of actually, uh, you know, being shut down. Right. It is not to say that VC funded companies will not. I think there also will be mortality there and that is part of the portfolio construct that we do and the mortality could go up a little bit depending on the business models that the companies are running like those who are not focused on unit economics uh, or possibly were saying that i will buy my way to growth because i will be able to raise money are the ones who are at the highest level of risk today they have to very quickly pivot and then make their unit economics work even to attract additional capital. Many of the companies that uh, we are part of, uh, actually like um, Anand said, uh, generally tend to be anywhere on an average 12 months plus runway, uh, which is a good thing. And uh, we have also told them saying that, look, be prepared that you have to turn profitable with this. Right. I think when the market settles down which we believe will be i think sometime early 21 onwards when the market settles down and capital starts having to there's a lot of dry powder both in the country and outside the country of funds which have raised a lot of money so they have to deploy it and i think at that point in time companies which have which have got better uh, unit economics better business uh, facing the market uh, are the ones which will attract actually even more capital than they want and uh, they will become bigger and uh, that is what we expect to happen right and i also believe that i think our startup industry which is approximately between 13 and 15 years old we will have in the next five years companies going public in our portfolio we have four companies which will go public which are uh, you know on track for that and uh, some of them are already market leaders, both offline and online put together. I think every uh, fund will have some of them and that actually we will have more startups getting listed uh, both in India and outside. Now that the regulation allows companies to get listed outside and uh, I think we will find more uh, tech companies going leadership and hopefully we will also see uh, scaling new heights. I think the previous height has been $20 billion transaction for Walmart. And in the next five years, hopefully we will have companies which will cross that valuation. Wow. I think that's a really optimistic and heartening note to end this panel. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sanjay, Anand and TCM. Truly a pleasure. And thank you for your candid views and insights. Thanks very much.